Well, to the Monday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. We're heading into a very, very busy mid January. I mentioned it on a video I did from home yesterday, but in case you didn't watch that, thanks to everyone who commented and sent in reports from the uh, Saturday system that for a lot of us was kind of an underachiever. We had some dry air that got involved and it kept those snowfall rates in check. Now, I expressed, uh, or I, I put a little commentary, if you will, on Facebook um, because, of course, no surprise, Facebook was particularly uh, grumpy uh, Saturday. Uh, you know, I think a lot of a lot of people these days, it's it's a problem that we have in the weather enterprise where there's so many sources of weather information out there that people can kind of get confused as to what the actual forecast is and who made what forecast. It all kind of bleeds together. And truth be told, we, we harped on the fact all week that this would be a minor system. Now, we made one change on Friday to bump up the snow expectations from a coating to an inch to an inch or two. That was a mistake. But it's not like we bumped it up to a lot more than that and promised bad roads and things like that. Um, but some people were under the impression, I think, that we were going to get a lot of snow on Saturday. And that just was never the case, even though I did see some, you know, kind of inflated snowfall forecast numbers from other sources out there late last week. They didn't come from us, that is for sure. Anyway, uh, the storm did, as promised, across New England, parts of Pennsylvania. It was a pretty healthy January snowstorm with six plus inches, pretty common, even some double digit amounts in interior New England. But in our viewing area, yeah, it was a coating at most for a lot of us, uh, you know, a couple of inches in a few spots in some of our adjacent counties to the north and to the east. But overall, it was kind of a nothing burger. At the Youngstown Warren Airport, we managed to, s to piece together 0.2 Saturday and 1.4 on Sunday. Another 0.2 today. You know, these observations from the airport sometimes I think are a little suspect. Sometimes they can be a little inflated, I think. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we've had some measurable snow at times so far in January. Before the season, of course, we are way behind the average. All right, we've got a couple of dynamic winter storms getting set to impact the U.S. over the next several days. The first one is in progress. And uh, blizzard warnings are out from the front range of the Rockies in Colorado and New Mexico, through the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma, right up through parts of the Plain States. Winter storm warnings extend up towards Green Bay, Milwaukee, and the UP of Michigan. There's also a severe weather component with this. Uh, you know, severe weather season along the Gulf Coast runs from late fall right through springtime. So, you know, they can see severe weather in the middle of winter with a fair amount of regularity, so this is not a huge surprise. But yeah, Tornado Watch still out for a lot of Louisiana, Southern Mississippi. Uh, the uh, college football championship game played in Houston indoors this evening. Um, the severe weather threat winding down in southeastern Texas as of this recording, but a few counties are still under that Tornado Watch. Now for us, it's wind that's going to be a big story coming up for Tuesday and probably Wednesday as well in the Weather Service offices in Cleveland and Pittsburgh did issue last night and into today a series of products, uh, wind advisories, high wind warnings. The wind warnings are for the higher terrain east of Pittsburgh, up in the Laurel Highlands, and up near the Lake Erie shoreline and into southwestern New York. In our viewing area, the wind advisories clip Trumbull and Mercer, but we're splitting hairs here. It's going to be windy everywhere across our area tomorrow afternoon, whether you're in the advisory or not. So yeah, big storm, middle of the country. The snow is falling hot and heavy from Wichita to Omaha, and a rain and thunderstorms down along the Gulf Coast this evening. For us, we're going to wait until about daybreak tomorrow for the precipitation to push in. Now, when it pushes in, you're going to see a lot of colors on the map here when I pause this first thing tomorrow morning. All right, let's pause it right here. <laughs> you know, 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you're an early riser, what you're going to encounter, I think, is some big, gloppy snowflakes and some sleet pellets, and it's all going to be pretty low impact, but maybe there's a few slick surfaces, especially those colder surfaces. I'm not expecting anything more than really a coating worth of snow and sleet in most of the area, and it's not going to last very long, but if you're an early riser, might be a little frozen precipitation that causes a few slick surfaces. But whatever manages to stick is going to get washed away quickly as we go through the rest of the morning as the rain takes over and temperatures rise through the 30s. Now, it's going to be windy all day, but especially as we get into the midday and afternoon hours, that's when the wind will be strongest. Here's some model wind gusts. You know, 40 to 45 will be common here locally. I think with some downsloping off the hills south of Erie, up near the Lake Erie shoreline in Erie County and into southwestern New York, you know, there's going to be some 50 to 60 mile per hour gusts. That's why the high wind warnings are in effect for those locations. And we've got quite a bit of rain heading our way. Here's a look at the computer model spread. Um, the NAM model, as is often the case, looks a little overdone to me. I think a good average will be about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch worth of rain. And with that amount of rain, with that kind of wind, and the fact that the ground is not 
frozen solid. We haven't been in the deep freeze of late. Do have a moderate concern about some uh, some weak trees perhaps uh, being felled <laughs> tomorrow afternoon with an inch worth of rain and gusts to 45, 50 miles per hour. Um, especially trees that aren't in great shape will be susceptible to falling, and that could lead to some power outage issues across parts of the area tomorrow afternoon. So our low track is far enough to the north and west that we're you know f you know definitely in the warm sector for the afternoon. We're going to get up into the 40s by the end of the day while it snows in Milwaukee and across parts of Michigan and back towards St. Louis. That's not going to be a big concern for us around here. It's the wind and the rain. We get a break tomorrow evening. Showers will wrap back in for a time tomorrow night, but by daybreak Wednesday, it's pretty much frozen precipitation. Flurries and snow showers around from time to time Wednesday, but it's going to be pretty low impact. It's going to be a kind of a day like we had yesterday, where temperatures are above freezing. It's going to be snowing for a chunk of the day, but it's kind of a hard time sticking or at least being impactful. Um, it's just going to be a kind of a nasty day with those temperatures in the 30s and once again, wind gusts of 40 plus miles per hour. A little bit of a break between systems on Thursday. This week uh, system, yeah, I think this is overdone in the model. You know, I wouldn't expect more than a sprinkle or a flurry out of this on Thursday. Overall, this is kind of a, a break in the action on Thursday before more interesting times ahead. We'll talk about that Friday and Saturday system in just a second. But yeah, this is a uh, cold that's going to envelop most of the country as we go towards the weekend and into early next week. Now, the biggest departures from average will be out here. But it's going to be colder than average, certainly around here. We've got some, you know, a handful of days, probably at least, with highs in the 20s coming our way by Sunday and into the first part of next week. Even as early as Saturday afternoon, it's going to be much colder with wind chills down in the single digits by Saturday afternoon. So we'll be talking about wind chills from the weekend through early next week. And again, the nastiest, pardon me, cold will be out here. And while we'll be on the fringes of it and it won't be anything too crazy for January, we haven't dealt with cold like this very often in the last couple of winters. We had a couple of days worth of this around Christmas time last winter. But for the most part, this will be the longest stretch of cold of this magnitude we've had in about two years since January of 2022. All right, let's head over and check out what's going to happen or what may happen as we head towards Friday and Saturday. Um, the way that the, the, the sequence of this may be sort of similar to the storm that will be coming in Tuesday into Tuesday night. Now, the timing of this is different in that uh, this is coming late in the day on Friday instead of at the beginning of the day, like we have tomorrow. But the low track is kind of similar, but this may even be a stronger area of low pressure. And the the sensible weather for us is going to be highly dependent on the exact track of the uh, system. All these L's, possible low pressure centers Friday evening at about 7 p.m. Now, Far enough to the west, and we're almost certainly going to see a changeover to rain pretty quickly Friday evening. A little bit of a flatter area of low pressure, maybe not quite as strong, that tracks more like this. We could hang on to frozen precipitation a little bit longer. This is the uh, GFS ensemble. This is a look at the European, kind of pretty similar to the GFS. The highest concentration of L's is right around Cincinnati Friday evening. Now, the Canadian ensemble is flatter and weaker with the low and a little bit farther to the south, and no surprise, the Canadian model advertises more snow for us. I think right now the most likely outcome is that we pick up some accumulating snow Friday evening, whether it's a couple of hours worth or maybe five or six hours worth and enough to be problematic. Don't know that just yet, but I think that's the most likely outcome right now is that there'll be some snow that sticks Friday evening. But I do think odds favor a stronger area of low pressure and a changeover to rain as we go into Friday night at some point. And we could spend a lot of Friday night with rain and gusty winds. Now, this system, unlike the one coming tomorrow, does have Arctic air coming in behind it. And temperatures are going to crash on Saturday. We're going to see snow showers. And unlike Wednesday and unlike yesterday, Saturday's snow showers could stick. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a lake effect component with them. It's going to be a blustery, nasty day on Saturday. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we had some, some accumulating snow uh, you know, it's not going to be a huge amount, but some accumulating snow with those gusty winds and colder temperatures on Saturday. So again, most likely outcome, some snow Friday evening, changing to rain at some point Friday night, changing back to snow showers Saturday as temperatures crash, wind chills by Saturday afternoon, probably in the single digits, and some pretty nasty cold coming our way starting Saturday and taking us through at least the first half of next week. We'll talk about the longer range in more detail once we get behind a couple of these storms behind us. But I do think the last week of January, say from the 23rd through the end of the month, will not be as cold. It's really this weekend through about the 20th, 21st. Uh, you know, we're going to have a good 
seven, eight, nine days of, of pretty nasty cold coming our way. All right, more updates right here on Weather for Weather Geeks, my social media, and on our, on our uh, newscasts as well. Thanks for watching on this Monday evening. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.